All right, so I have reduced my assignment three to B. This is what I recommend. You go to image, image size, to be 150 pixels per inch, which is a really high bar for screen resolution. Standard screen resolution is 72 pixels per inch. So this is more than twice that. At a size where the smallest dimension is eight inches. Right. Now it looks small, but when I zoom in or if I view it at 100%, you can see it's still quite large. It basically fills the whole screen. So in terms of showing an animation on the screen, we have not lost any um, resolution, but we have reduced the memory load by a factor of 10. Okay, now these are my assets, right? Already uh, built in, I need to add some more, but I'm going to save it. It's no longer assignment three. We're gonna create two files for our animation assignment. This is assignment five. I'm gonna save it to the desktop. And I'm gonna call it no longer my creature scape composition. I'm gonna call it my assets file. So this is where I'm gonna, this will be my treasure box of all the little ideas of my storyboard and all the little movements. And I'm saving some time by using kind of my creature already in its different places. So I have my creature there. I also have my creature back here. Is going to be the one that pops up and eats this guy. But I don't have my um, I don't have my bug yet. So let me bring in my new assets. And I have the close foreground here. And I want my bug to be behind the close foreground. So let's bring it in right here. So we're going to add into this assets file new images. So my bug's there, bigger than I need it to be, but that allows me to just quickly select it out, select out all this negative space. I can even keep the shadow and then just maybe erase out the shadow a little bit. And then I'm going to say select inverse and duplicate, and then delete the smart layer. So all these skills we've practiced before in compositing. This is our final kind of compositing project. So there's my bug. Now that shadow seems a little strong. So what I'm gonna do is use my eraser at 100%. 0% hardness, quite large. I'm going to fade that out and then take its opacity down a little bit and fade it up. Okay, now I'm going to play with levels. Image adjustment levels. I want the bug to show up, so I'm going to increase its contrast a little bit. Increase its highlights, increase, increase its shadows. I can take out the atmosphere for a moment if I like. I can just leave it on or maybe just dim it. Because my atmosphere is also an asset. Right. Whoops. Select my bug. You can label your layers. I'm going to call this guy space bug. Because these are all the toys we have to play with. Okay, that shadow is a little too strong. So I can select it and then I can erase it out slowly. And because it's at screen resolution, you can see the pixels and I don't need to be super, super tight about each of these things. I'm just softening the shadow but not getting rid of it entirely. Because if I keep the shadow, especially a slightly transparent shadow underneath my bug, then that's going to help the illusion of it moving across the landscape. 
All right, so there's my little space bug. I can also, of course, warp him, transform him, do different things with him to customize. And I could even add on like a different head do a variety of things to customize it, right? But right now he's just a character asset. Now I can start playing with him. So here comes the bug. And then he's gonna go into the background. And as he goes into the background, he's going to get smaller, right? So I'm going to have that illusion. And instead of just keeping it as one layer, I'm actually going to duplicate it and make it smaller in a bunch of different steps. So I might actually start with my space bug on top here. It might come in in the extreme foreground like this and then dip behind and under and then back. Okay, but for right now, that's my first character. I'll mark him as violet. And that's the foreground version. And as I build more and more assets, I'll make duplicates of the bug, change its scale, change its place. You'll start to see. Uh, what other assets do I want? I want to bring in more atmosphere assets. This floating over the top of everything. What else? I want to bring in this floating on top of everything. I don't need to worry about softening it. These all have plenty of resolution. Okay. And then I want this as the ultimate kind of lighting. And I might use it in an overlay mode. I might use it in a pin light mode. Not quite that. Soft light. There we go. And I might play with its opacity. But there'll be lots of ways I can kind of affect my stage. So this is my stage lighting. I'm going to put all of it into this atmosphere folder. So it can all be turned off and on. I'm going to go, go ahead and get rid of things that are distracting that I use to improve my landscape, like these little rocks. And we want to simplify now. So I've saved this as my assets file. I'm going to say file save. It's reduced to 150 pixels per inch by eight inches tall. Now I'm going to change it and save it as something else. File save as my assignment five stage file. And this is where the final frames are going to go. Now, my assets are mostly characters and atmosphere. My rocks aren't changing. I don't have a volcanic eruption or an earthquake planned in my storyboard. So my stage is what's called a set stage. So to make my stage, now I can really, really simplify. I can delete all the atmosphere, I can delete the character, but I want to keep the close foreground because that's what's at the front of the stage. The rocks at the feet I need, and those are actually going to be part of the close foreground so I can merge those layers together. Creature gradient overlay I don't need. The creature I don't need. I'm going to bring those in. Uh, the rainbow rocks, this can be merged into the close foreground. All right, so that's first part of my stage. Oh, I lost something though. Because my character needs to be able to go between these. So this, the rainbow rocks are going to become part of the... How is that working? Oh, I see. So I'll keep those separate. And then I have the middle ground, right? All that stays. This character goes out. 
this character goes out. These things I can keep separate because this is more like atmosphere. A little tempted to just turn it off. And then this is the far background. Okay, so this is my stage. It has all the things I need for my character. I'm going to change it a little bit. Just to help with the animation. By blending, by pulling some of these to make up for that little gap in the middle. Oops, not there. And another way I can do that. Yeah, I like that. Another way I can do that is I can just create a new blank layer behind and fill it with 50% gray and put that behind. All right, so now I've got my stage. Your stage can all be flattened, but that's like a curtain that goes on behind everything. My stage is close foreground, uh, mid middle ground, front, <laughs> middle ground, back, middle ground atmosphere, and background. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and merge the far background with this gray layer. So now that we have the stage file, we can save that. So now we have two identical files that have the same resolution, the same exact shape. And that's very helpful. I'm also going to tug this and just warp it up a little bit. OK. So now, how do I create a frame, right? So this is how it works. I have both files open. I've saved them both. I'm going to mark them both with green. Actually, I usually do the, the assets file is blue. And then the stage file is green. The stage is actually where we're going to make our final frames. So I go to my assets file. I want to open that up. So we have two different Photoshop files. And I'm going to say window arrange two up horizontal. Right. Then I'm going to shrink them both on the screen at the same time. Okay, so in this, I'll have tons of layers for all my assets. And then I'm going to move those characters onto my set. So you see, the only thing that really changes between them are the layers. And my character is going to nestle right here. And I'm going to go ahead and lock these so I don't accidentally change my stage. And you'll see why that matters. OK, so now I need to fit my characters into my, I need to put them onto my stage. So let me find them. So I have this guy. And he also has some lighting on him already. So I want that. I'm going to select it. And this, and I think that's it. Oh, I can even take my gradient overlay if I want. So I've selected all three of those. I'm going to hit Command C. And I'm going to merge those into a folder. Right. I'm going to call that, what's his name, character Y. So character Y contains all those things. Now I am going to uh, duplicate character Y. And on this duplicate, I'm going to move him down into place. 